What's up everyone? John Renter from Techno and Buffalo here with a full review of the latest Google Nexus phone. This is the LG built Nexus 4. It's rocking a quad core, glass back, all kinds of other goodness in its teeny tiny package. Let's put it through its paces and let's see if it should be the phone you pick up and hold with you for the next couple years. Let's start the Nexus 4 review with hardware. So I was pretty underwhelmed when I first picked up the Nexus 4. Not because its design isn't solid, but because I'd already sort of been treated to a look at it with the Optimus G, which is pretty similar in design. The front is dominated by an incredible 4.7 inch display that went off appears to switch from edge to edge. I love the bevel top, which slopes down to the slick and sparkly backside. It feels super solid, it's easy to hold, it isn't too heavy. I really do like the sparkle effect. It reminds me a bit of the texture Samsung used to put on its Omnia line way back in the day. I don't really like the plastic border running around the phone. I think it takes away from the otherwise pretty premium look. There's a volume rocker that's easy to reach with the left hand, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, and a very easy to reach power button on the right hand side, and of course, a micro USB charging port on the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the specs. The Nexus 4 packs a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, which is arguably one of the more powerful chips in the market right now. Multiple reports have confirmed LTE support is actually on board, but the phone itself don't use it. Instead, you are stuck with HSPA on AT&T or HSPA Plus on T-Mobile, which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. Other hardware specs include two gigs of RAM, slim port HDMI that uses a micro USB port, and 2100 milliamp hour battery to keep that guy powered on and working. My biggest gripe with their hardware is that you're locked into either eight or 16 gigs of storage. It's not enough to store all my music videos, photos, and the rest of the goodness I like to put on my phone, but clearly it's a bit from Google to get you to rely more on cloud and streaming based services. So I'd be pretty remiss if I didn't talk about the Qi wireless charging support built into the Nexus 4. And that's Qi Qi, not Qi or Qi. It's pronounced Qi. We gotta look it up to make sure. Uh, it's actually the same system that uses in the Lumia 920. So if you've got one of those Lumia 920 charging ports lying around, you can actually pop the Nexus 4 right on it or use one of the Energizer pads, throw it on and get your charge on. So next, let's talk about software. The big standout feature of the Nexus 4 is its OS. It's the first phone on the market to launch with Android 4.2. Jelly Bean. That's right, point two is also Jables. And it's the best version of Android I've really ever used, despite having a really odd bug that won't let you use December as a month for an event inside the People app. But that'll get fixed. Everything is super smooth and feels natural, and there aren't any weird software hangups that I've experienced on any other devices. Although, I bet the quad core processor and two gigs of RAM certainly help make up for any sort of bugs that might be in this code. So there's a few enhancements over Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, but nothing super major, which is probably why Google stuck with the Jelly Bean name. Notable enhancements include better camera controls, a pretty cool 360 degree panorama option, better notification management, and a decent amount more. Although out of all the new features, my favorite option is the new keyboard, which allows you to swipe from letter to letter and create a word. Just like Swipe, third party app, but I find it's actually much smoother. Deep down though, I'm still a tap, 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 tap it, tap it, tap it, writer. I'm just getting this out of the way, I totally love the new lock screen. It can now be customized with widgets, yay! I can, for example, quickly see my Gmail inbox or my calendar appointments without unlocking the phone. This is so useful. I'm actually curious why it hasn't been included on earlier releases of Android. Google Now and Google Search have also gotten refined, though I couldn't notice a huge difference if it was offered at Android 4.1. Google now quickly tells me the weather and the traffic before I head out for the day and their support for identifying flight times other notifications in your email. Google search lets you use your voice to look up anything and I actually prefer it to Siri. Uh, I found it to be extremely accurate and really good at understanding voice inputs too. I also love that Google added a small icon notification shade for quickly bringing up commonly used settings. I can tap it anytime I want to view my own Google profile, change the brightness, access more settings, turn Wi-Fi on or off, check battery level percentage, and turn airplane mode and control the Bluetooth. All right, so next let's talk about performance of that beastly quad core. Nexus 4, as I mentioned, has a Snapdragon S4 Pro chip, similar to one used in the HTC Droid DNA. I ran our standard quadrant benchmark and received a pretty whopping score of 4,775, which is actually below the score the Droid DNA received of 7,461. From an overall user perspective though, don't get too caught up in the scores. The phone is extremely fast and feels really snappy. But for those of you folks that want to know the numbers, there you have it. All right, let's talk about the camera because this guy's packing some pretty cool camera tricks. Nexus 4 is equipped with an eight megapixel camera on the back side and a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera on the front for taking all your duck lip photos that I know you're taking. Photos aren't amazing and I saw better shots from my iPhone 5 and Lumia 920. They're just okay. The new 360 degree panorama feature is pretty neat, but others can only view those shots with the Android 4.2 device or from Google Plus. It's kind of frustrating to use. I just snapped five different panoramas to get the picture most accurately represented. And one time it said I was moving too fast even when I followed the guidelines. 
The 8 megapixel camera can record 1080p video, but turned out to be loaded with artifacts when I played the clip back on my computer. Also, from what I could distinguish, it lacks continuous autofocus, which is a pretty big staple on most smartphones now. Alright, so next let's talk about data, call quality, and battery life. Call quality Nexus 4 was on par with pretty much every other high-end smartphone I've tested recently. There aren't any really standout features here. I was easily able to hear the other caller, didn't have any drop calls, no white noise on either end, and thought the speakerphone was loud enough to use during a conference call. Again, 4G LTE isn't active on Nexus 4 even if it's been laying dormant. So when we ran our test, I received a pretty average download speed and about 1 megabit on AT&T's 3G network, which is pretty terrible compared to LTE speeds. I tested with the T-Mobile SIM and received a download speed in the apartment of 1.3, about an average upload speed of 1.18. Again, T-Mobile's HSPA network, not the curious faster 4G HSPA plus 42 megabits per second network. However, those are just my speeds. Anywhere you go, you might be able to get much faster ones. Something to keep in mind though, if you want to pick up an Nexus 4, it's best to test an unlocked device to see if you're going to get decent speeds. 2100 milliamp hour battery was able to get me through a full day of usage, but I found it drained really fast when I was shooting pictures. I went outside with 8% left, and after about 15 minutes, the phone turned completely off. I generally idled pretty well too, so I wasn't able to pick it up in the morning with a bit of charge left. Overall though, even though it doesn't run on a 4G LT network, it does have a power hungry quad core processor, so you're going to want to keep your charger by on long trips. So what's the final verdict on the Nexus 4? It's a great phone, missing some things we'd love it to have. If you're looking for a device that's going to get the latest Android update for the next few years, and look no further than the Nexus 4. But if you want LTE, you want more storage, you might want to look at the Droid DNA, the One X, the One X Plus, or a bevy of other Android options out there. Galaxy S3, or even the little bit older Galaxy Nexus. For right now, I'm John Render from Techno Buffalo. Check us out for the latest and greatest tech news. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.